Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to speak about USCE. So USCE is like a common term used for US clinical experience. Before we move on, I want to quickly thank Unacademy for sponsoring this video. If you've seen my step one resource video, I'm sure you know how much lecture videos help me in strengthening my basics. Recently, Unacademy has come up with one such course with loads of videos for the USMLE. These videos are by Dr. Najib, Dr. Stephen Dory, and many other doctors. Like when I was watching Kaplan videos, Dr. Stephen Dory was like one of my favorite professors because he taught biostats and ethics so well. It really made it like super simple for me. So that's something you should definitely check out. Additionally, Unacademy has practice tests and quizzes as well. The best part is they also have scholarship tests that you can attempt and if you get like a high score, you'll get access to more videos, Q banks and other resources. Whenever you guys ask me about resources, I always ask you guys to like try it first and, and then see if, if it suits you. So to use the link in the description for a free trial and see if these videos and quizzes cater to your style of studying. And after your free trial, if you choose to buy this, you, you can also use my code for a discount on your purchase. So try it out and let me know what you guys think. <laughs> USCE is a very important part of your residency application for two main reasons. Firstly, having USCE shows program directors that you're able to work in the healthcare system in the United States. Because as you can imagine, the healthcare system may be very different in different countries and programs may be happy to know that, okay, this person has experience in their own country and they also have experience with the US healthcare system. So that will be looked at very positively. The second reason why USCE is important is because another part of your application is LORs. So LORs stand for letters of recommendation. So now these letters can be from any doctor you've rotated with. It can be from a doctor at your university's hospital or it could be a doctor from a place you did your internship in or it could be a doctor you did an elective with. It can be from anywhere. Again, letters written by doctors in the United States may have more weight because what you're trying to show the program is that you you are able to fit into the US healthcare system and you are able to perform well there. So that is kind of preferred over home country LORs. So if you do have just home country LORs, just try to get at least one US LOR because sort of let programs know that you're not only doing well in your home country system but also doing really well in the US healthcare system. An LOR from a doctor in the US may have a positive impact on your application. So basically these are the two main reasons why candidates are encouraged to have USCE. Another reason why US CE is important is networking. So when you sign up for a rotation, it gives you the opportunity to get to know doctors. And if you're going for in-person rotations, you'll also get to know other residents at the hospital. So now this may help you during your interview season because sometimes some doctors may also recommend your application for an interview. And also if the place that you're rotating at has a residency program, then you may stand a better chance to get an interview there. None of this is definitive, but it definitely increases the probability by at least a little bit. Now, US clinical experience can be of two major types. One is an in-person rotation and one is a tele-rotation. Before the pandemic, all the rotations were in-person rotations. But because of the pandemic, since, since there were travel bans and also getting a visa was really hard, tele-rotations started gaining a lot more popularity. So let's first speak about in-person rotations. There are basically three types of in-person rotations. You can either do an elective or clerkship, an observership or an externship. So let me tell you what the differences are. So if you're still a medical student, that is, that's if you've not graduated yet, then you can apply for hands-on clinical experience. This is offered only to medical students. So if you've not graduated yet, you qualify to apply to this kind of rotation. But if you've already graduated, then you may not find hands-on experience offered directly the way they are offered to medical students. So in such cases, you have two options. You can either do an observership or you can do an externship. So for observerships, what's going to happen is you won't really be given an opportunity to do anything hands-on. You'll probably just be shadowing the healthcare team and learn that way. However, if you do want to get hands-on clinical experience after graduation, there are these things called externships. These are hands-on experiences, but the issue is not a lot of institutions offer it directly. So most of the time, you may have to apply through an agency. There may be some exceptions, which I'll get to in just a bit. But for now, just know that mostly hands-on experience is way easier to get when you're a medical student but if you want hands-on after graduation it may be
be relatively hard and you may have to use agencies the major reason why hands on experience is valued is because you're actually going to interact with patients and you can like display your clinical skills and your clinical knowledge so this is like an opportunity for the doctor to actually get to know you during the rotation and eventually once you do all these things you'll end up getting a stronger lor as compared to an observership also when you do like a hands on rotation you'll also get access to the emr system in some rotations that's going to help you a lot as that will prepare you for residency as well so just the way in person rotations are of these three types you also have a similar thing going on for tele rotations so now tele rotations can also be of three major types you firstly have like an observership in this again you won't be able to interact as such you you'll probably be able to just view the doctor and their healthcare team throughout the day and see what they do and stuff like that but you may not have the opportunity to contribute or interact in any way the second one is where you're seeing patients virtually so this was a rotation that i did with dr kohli with by applying through brooklyn usce so in this rotation what's going to happen is you're going to be talking to patients taking their history present cases probably be asked to interpret labs and all those things so this is pretty hands on and you'll also get access to the emr system which is also a very big advantage so if you're doing a tele rotation make sure you get a more hands on one as compared to an observership because that way you'd be able to contribute more the third type of tele rotation is, is a very interactive one the rotation that i did was with dr colman now this was a rotation in which there was like a lot of interaction with the doctor so like even on days when we did not have patients the doctor used to give us a case and we had to discuss amongst ourselves and come up with a plan and it gave us an opportunity to like voice our ideas and opinions so i think that was really good because if you imagine the more you get to interact with the doctor the more they get to know you when they know you they'll probably be in a position to write a stronger lor for you so that's one thing you should take into consideration while picking rotations and since there were not a lot of patients we were also linked to a simulation lab which was also a very fun experience this took place at the cook county simulation lab and we could all attend it virtually so what's going to happen is you have like the mannequin and you have a doctor controlling the mannequin so the doctor will like give us a case saying that there's a 53 year old man who came in with chest pain that has been present for the last 3 hours so then the two people who are leading the sim lab get to make the decisions like let's get the vitals let's do an ekg let's Let's give the patient nitroglycerin. So all these things are told by the two people who lead the sim lab. The other people who are on Zoom can contribute by sharing their thoughts and opinions on the group chat. So that will sort of help the two people who are leading that session. So as and when we intervene, the doctor controlling the mannequin will change the vitals and stuff like that. And we also had like other doctors and other students also there who would like act as if they were the patient's family. And we should speak to them the way we speak to a patient's family. So once this was done, then the doctor will like go over all the steps and like tell us what we did right and what we did wrong. So it was amazing. This was done with like Dr. Watts and Dr. Coleman. So that was like a lot of fun. And since it was a sim lab, it was really safe to like even learn how to. approach emergency cases because you may not get to do that at a hospital right so that way i feel like sim lab was like really good so now that we've understood the different types of rotations let me go over how to apply to each of them so if you're a medical student you can apply to rotations very easily because you don't really need to go through an agency you can apply directly to hospitals currently these are the following universities that are offering electives to medical students so if you want just go check their website and under understand the application process and then you can like go ahead with it these may be relatively cheap because you're not going to be paying any agencies right so try your best to apply directly to hospitals and try to reach out to doctors for opportunities to rotate with them because that way you don't really have to pay like a third party anything right so that's a huge advantage if you're a medical student because there are a lot of things available number 2 if you want observerships you can like check the list of observerships on the aamc website i'll link it in the description so even there you can like see what are the places that are, that are offering observerships and you can go to the institution's website and apply to them alternatively you can also network with doctors maybe on linkedin and twitter and and sort of request them to give you the opportunity to maybe a be an observer with them honestly you may not receive a reply most of the time but you can always try because if it works out then it's amazing right so that's also another way to find observerships the third thing for externships as 
far as I know, like most institutions don't offer externships directly because usually they give hands on only to medical students and not to graduates. But I came across this one opportunity a few days back on Instagram. It's basically like this clinic in Michigan that's offering externships. So if you want to do an externship, you can maybe check that out. Because see, personally, I don't have experience with it. So I don't know how the rotation is, the structure or anything about it. So ask around and try to get in touch with people who've recently done the rotation there so that you get a fair idea of what to expect and how you can be prepared for it. So externships are like usually offered through agencies. He's like even a friend of mine is currently doing an externship in New York. So she applied through an agency as well. And I know another friend of mine also applied through an agency for her USCE. When I did my tele-rotation, institutions were not offering it directly to medical students. So I had to apply through an agency. I did the one with Dr. Kohli with Brooklyn USCE. And I did the one with Dr. Coleman through Chicago clerkships. And the SimLab was organized by RTIMG Village, which was also with Dr. Coleman and Dr. Watts. So those were the three things that I did. And if you want to know like my detailed experience of Brooklyn USCE, you can take a look at this video. And if you want to know like my detailed experience with Dr. Coleman, you can like take a look at this video. Uh, okay, so like in August 2021, there was Emory University that was offering tele-rotations for free, which was for a duration of two weeks. So join Twitter if you haven't already, because there are so many opportunities that you're going to find and follow inside the match because they share a lot of these opportunities and they keep like amplifying information. So make sure you follow them and, and follow all these institutions because they also keep posting opportunities and many of them are even for free. So you'll be able to save like a lot of money. So, so join Twitter if you haven't already. And also there's like one more thing that I want to tell you guys, like while looking for USCE, always look for like the cheapest option available because there may be three different agencies that are offering the same rotation for three different prices. So make sure you do your research, try to find out in detail what they're offering and pick it accordingly. A second thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is that when you're looking at all these experience videos and you may see a lot of experience posts on Reddit, know that these posts are just based on the person's experience. So what may be an amazing experience for someone may not be that great for another person. And at the same time, if a person did not have a really great experience with a particular rotation, it does not mean that it's going to be bad for you as well. So just take everything with a pinch of salt and try to weigh the pros and cons and see what's best for you. And also like some of the rotations that I did were like way back in 2020 and like probably like 2021 July also. So the structure of these rotations may have changed over all these months. So make sure you try to reach out to people who have completed the rotation recently so that you know what the rotation is like right now. And then you can make like a better decision as to if you want to apply to it or not. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The third thing is to find out the number of people you're rotating with. So the number of people is also pretty important because that sort of uh, plays an important role in the quality of your experience because let's say there are way too many people you may not get enough opportunity to take patient responsibility and stuff like that so try to check that before you apply as well so if you've seen this video you know how tele rotations were like the only usce that i had and that's the reason why i can speak more about tele rotation as compared to in-person rotations because i don't really have first-hand experience with in-person rotations so if you want to know that make sure you get in touch with people who've done in-person rotations so that you know what to expect during those rotations. It's sort of like a misconception that you cannot match with just tele rotations because there are many people who have done that. And if you feel you can't travel because you don't have a visa and you're like thinking about tele rotations, I'd say go for it because ultimately what matters is the quality of your letter. So now let's say you did an in-person rotation and you get like a very generic letter of recommendation that may not be as good as having a more personalized, customized LOR from a tele rotation. So ultimately what matters is the strength of your letter so don't be discouraged there's always a way and don't feel that you cannot match with just tele rotations because i also created this one video for match a resident where i have spoken about the pros and cons of tele rotations so make sure you check that out and weigh everything before you make a decision so that's about it for this video if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and as usual don't forget to like comment share and subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you next time Bye.